Commander 19 spoilers have begun. Jake, can you feel it? I I feel that there is another product on the horizon, and it I, is not the modern horizon. Hey, it is one of the products that I most look forward to every year, and so far from what we've seen, it's looking kind of pushed this year. Yeah, whatever's going to move those old morph cards that nobody's using. Hey, let's jump right into it. Let's go. In response. Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. I'm Jake. I'm Joel. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel, Joel are magic. magic. Real quick, just to remind you of our schedule, we are streaming Sunday nights and Wednesday nights. We are having new videos Tuesdays and Fridays. Jake, let's just get into talking about Commander 19. Yeah, let's go ahead and just start talking about these cards. We've got a lot of fun stuff to go over in this first video of, uh, of more videos that will ultimately cover some of the same stuff. So far, we have had spoiled the Commanders, Cadena, Savine, Ange, Falkenrath, and Gered Conclave Exile, and some of the spells that go with them. Uh, it is Sunday when we're shooting this. Sunday night is when this video will come out, kind of off schedule for us. So far, we have had Thursday, Friday, and Saturday spoilers happen. Jake, from the commanders you've seen, Cadena, Savine, Ange, and Gered, which one are you personally most excited about? I mean, personally most excited about, um, I would say, uh, let's let's go up to the Saltai one. Yeah, Kadena. Yeah, Kadena. Here, I'll I bring think, her up big. I think the reason that I'm the most excited for this card is that, you know, we, we have a commander here that is essentially like, it's honestly like a SRAM senior edificer. <laughs> Your favorite card. <laughs> except for more cards. Right, yeah, exactly. You know, it's It's got that draw a card thing that really helps make it viable. It's It represents something that I think that all four of these represent in a big way, which is a departure from the color's normal things, the color combination's normal tricks and, you know, bag of fun. And they represent some mechanics that you can really take advantage of now versus, you know, it's like choosing Morophon to play a tribe that has got low representation. They've, they've given us some representation for some of these tribes, and Kadena's a huge, a huge example of that. Now, when you were playing originally, wasn't Morph like a, a mechanic that was part of like, it was part of Onslaught and Yeah, uh, yeah, and like Onslaught, Nemesis. Judgment, well not Nemesis, that was older, Judgment, Onslaught. Okay. Those, those were my first uh, kind of exposure to Morph as a mechanic. But now, you know, it, you have to choose this commander, but they have given us a commander that can use Morph as a tactic. I'll tell you, this card already, and I can just tell you from an MTG Finance uh, perspective, yeah. it's already started moving the needle on a ton of, oh, a I'm ton sure. of old Morph cards. That, old bulk like, stuff. Yeah, bulk stuff like Trail of Mystery and, and just like random, like, just silly stuff. Yeah. That, that didn't move forever is now like jumping by five dollars absolutely we've got with her like with all of the commanders that we've seen so far either a signature spell or a creature that goes with them cadena's is cadena's silencer which when it megamorphs counter all abilities your opponents control i honestly i love this card outside of Commander 2. I think this is the kind of card that might find its way into like Legacy. It's a 2-1 wizard for two. Yeah. It has the Megamorph ability. It's you're gonna flip it, it's gonna counter like a Planeswalker spell. Uh, or uh, Planeswalker loyalty ability. So there's like there's a lot of different ways that you can use this card and uh, I'm I'm really interested to see what more morph they come up with because it, yeah. it used to be a mechanic that people just kind of shrugged at and they were like. Uh, well, oh, I'm assuming awful. now that this has been spoiled. Everybody's searching the word morph and trying to find the best ones, and yeah, those are like, probably the ones that you're seeing blow up in shell price. Grab and, right, and like all all that random stuff. Uh, I'll tell you. you know, I, I can't decide between Savine and Ange as the two that I'm the most excited about. I think that Ange, if that's how you pronounce her name. Sure. Is is Ange. Uh, Ange. Ange? Yeah, Ange <laughs> is a fun way to pronounce it too. I think that from a competitive EDH side, this one has the most promise. It's low cost. It has haste. It's got words on it like draw a card, discard a card, untap. Those kind of words always get 
the competitive EDH players juices of frothing. Well, this card is really low cost, yeah. and it is it is honestly, in my opinion, in like a one v one setting, this card is spiky as hell, man. This is like you're gonna run like all of those madness cards you know like fiery temper and right um you know the the twins of of whatever common and you can you can do tons of tons of things with this card right and the fact that it's just like you're netting a card but then also you're getting the ability again as long as you build around madness this is the exact kind of commander that gets abused that's that's just like we're gonna see a lot of shenanigans come out of this commander. Well, you know it's abusable because you don't even have to necessarily build madness around it. She is a, on natural curve, she's a turn three graveyard enabler for you to pitch whatever you want that's your, you know, 12 cost creature or whatever to bring it back immediately from, right. you know, whatever recursion you've got. I think she's got some very interesting things about her and I think that this is going to be one of the most played of the new four in my opinion I, I absolutely have to agree with you as far as like I, I love the art the haste is apparent in the art like this this creature just did something awful to something right uh it, moving down the stairs i i love that it doesn't have flying i think flying would just be a, a little bit too over the top yep and uh it's just it's a really cool black red looter like yeah I, I love it's it. very cool. I love it. With her or with them, uh, Ange, I'm not sure if Ange is male or female. Ange's Ravager uh, attacks each combat if able, and when it attacks, discard your hand, draw three cards, and it's got a madness of two. That, I mean, it fits it perfectly. I love seeing that they're specifically designing around trying to make, you know, pushed powerful stuff. Well, this, this card right here, the Ravager, should be a, a pretty good indicator of, of how this deck needs to be built. Right. Um, it's, this card is, is, oh man, it is so, impressive. Yeah, I, I mean, that's, how I think it's going to be like huge. free for all setting, because, right. you know, I, I think, and that's the thing for me about Commander, is that I always think of Commander in like a, a, a four plus player format i i don't often think of commanders like oh i can't wait to 1v1 some commander that's just sure. not like the spirit of the game for me yeah but i'm sure there are some players who are like oh that is gonna be awesome yeah absolutely 1v1. now talking about a free-for-all setting chronoclasm mr savine over here this is Very cool. Very probably cool. the dopest to me it just speaks to me the most um, prevent all damage that would be dealt to it. That's that's pretty weird. Seems stapled on, but maybe he's got some spells in his deck that take advantage of that. And you know, if you're doing blasphemous act, that you know that helps with it. But I mean, whenever or, you're casting or any number of, of like small red board wipes, right? You know, any exactly, anything. exactly. Like, and whenever you cast your first instant or sorcery each turn, copy it. You can choose new targets. This card is just awesome to me it's in the white red blue colors which doesn't get a ton of love it is a truly flashback commander i mean honestly he builds like a graveyard deck without black in him or green in him and so i'm already in yeah it's it's pretty fun it's a pretty fun it's a pretty fun commander um i love that you know it they didn't put indestructible on this thing. No. You know, they just said any damage, whether it's combat or, or non-combat damage, is going to be prevented. You could still exile it. You could still right. destroy it with, with a spell. I think the the power and toughness are, are really good considering the power level of the card. Sure. I can't wait to see what people build with it. His it's little really signature good. spell returns a permanent card with three or less converted mana. Um... To, from the graveyard to the battlefield, and if it was if this spell, the reclamation spell, was cast from a graveyard, you can copy it. So you're getting three copies yeah. with his ability if he's on the battlefield when you flash back Savine's reclamation, and you're returning, you know, three or less cost permanents straight. It's just I love it. I love it. I'm not gonna lie. I. I... I feel like a lot of players are going to fall into the trap of, of playing like old flashback spells that may be subpar just to get value out of the commander. I think this commander is really going to shine when people turn it into Voltron. Right. I, I think more than anything, this is a Voltron commander built with really? tons and tons of... Yeah, I, I really do, in my opinion, just because it has so much uh, prevention and 
uh, built into it. Yeah. I think when you get like a lightning greaves on this or like big, huge, um, you know, artifacts and you're swinging away, maybe some token generators so that you can get around sacrifice effects. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I have to say just because I'm trying to think of like the kind of creatures that this, that this deck wants and I don't know if it does. I don't know if it does want creatures. I think it's chaos colors. You could do a lot of silly stuff. Well, yeah, I mean, people. it's return, so cre good ETB creatures, you know, um, creatures, white creatures that are coming in, destroying enchantments and artifacts, stuff like that. Red that's coming in, destroying artifacts. Blue coming in, you know, drawing new cards. Yeah, that's absolutely, yeah, that kind yeah. of stuff. And oh, rounding out the group of four, we've got Gerid, Conclave, Exile, in Naya. Whenever he enters the battlefield, create a 4-4 four, four Rhino, and when he attacks, populate the token, enters the battlefield, tapped and attacking. It is nice for me. I will say this before we get your thoughts on this. It sure. is nice to see a Naya commander that has something else going on besides cheating into the battlefield huge creatures or attacking itself and essentially i'm a voltron commander in naya you know i really dig that tokens are getting a you know here's the guy yeah i think it takes a special player that really wants to manage a field full of tokens it isn't me <laughs> no um but i i think that the card is really cool and i also um you know, cards like Doubling Season, Anointed Procession, yeah. like Token Generation, if you really are interested in this commander, I would say get those cards now because they are just, if this hey. thing takes off, oh man, it is going to be and gonna Well, be I, I know that the players exist. My wife, her favorite, one of her favorite decks was the Selesnya Conclave uh, commander that would just populate straight up. And yeah, yeah. not only did she have fun building the deck Choosing which creatures to put in it that would either bring tokens with it or sorceries that would put a bunch of tokens onto the battlefield. But one of her favorite parts of building that was also finding the actual tokens, you know, like the actual card token at sure. a card shop or whatever and saying, hey, do you have, you know, the 4-4 four, four Rhino with Trample token and having right. those sleeved as part of the deck all together. Like you're, you know, it was, oh, it was a little Naya Zoo kind of, kind of collection of a deck. Uh, Girid, Girid, I like that they're, you know, departing from the normal Naya stuff and uh, while still embracing something that makes sense for the shard. Girid, his, like uh... Worm Coil engine, dude? Like, oh, I, yeah. I, I'm not going to be surprised if that card sees a bump just because of this coming out. Yep, that could actually absolutely work. Um, Girid's Belligerence is his kind of signature spell. Um, it deals X damage as you, as you choose to divide among any number of creatures, whenever a creature's dealt this way dies, you get populate. to populate. Wow. So you just get to shoot yeah. stuff and make your army even bigger. Yeah, and this could be as, as big as like, you know, doing this for like one damage just to kill, you know, like a noble hierarch, and right. then all of a sudden you're populating like a, a six six. <laughs> or <laughs> so or your more three three death touch worms with yeah. your with your worm coil example. Yeah, man. So yeah, that's another. It's another power, powerful spell. I mean, In the addition, hype train, the hype train is already left the building. Oh yeah, I'm way more hyped on this than I have been with you know the Planeswalker commanders or the uh, you know the uh, mono colors. I wasn't really huge into them. I want to yeah. say, oh, the last one of Thursdays was Seedborn Muse reprint. Why not? You know. Yeah, it's a it's an excellent card. I would say this is a kind of card that like the power level is. It is high enough and it's not on the reserve list that we're going to see it keep coming out. It was in Battle Bond before yeah. that. It was in 10th edition and originally in Legions. It's like pretty much one of the only good Legions cards. And right. you can see the way that price has been affected. I remember when before Battle Bond and Commander, uh, obviously Commander 2019, but before Battle Bond, Seedborn Muse was like a $25 card. Yeah. It is cool though that they're dropping ten dollar cards into these decks right off the rip because last oh, year's this, set this did get criticized. Totally too. I mean, this is an yeah. amazing card, and I, I love that art of the dress with the the um, the kind of scarf coming off. I, I yeah. love that art. It looks very cool. Um, shout out to Adam Rex. It's it's cool to me that they are pumping more valuable cards into these decks. It seems, at least from first glance. 
um, if Seaborn uses any indication because last year's set kind of got criticized for not having a ton of value in the box. Um, yeah. And so it's nice to see that. Let's really, move really, to Friday. Really quick. Really quick before oh, yeah. Uh huh. I want to talk about the artwork on Kadena because this just seems so different from any of the creatures that that I've honestly seen. Like I know it's a Naga wizard, but yeah, Naga, it just, it Naga kind of wizard reminds me of like, dude. It kind of reminds me of like World of Warcraft or it does uh, like Starcraft. Yeah, I was bit. gonna say it's like a cartoony, a fantasy cartoony kind of art, much like World of Warcraft. That was gonna be my example. Yeah, it, it really is just like holy shit. World of Warcraft got got Nagas, and everyone's going to be running Warlock Naga. It Naga is Warlock. it is interesting to to mention the art on that, especially combined with things like Kadena's Silencer. I mean, look at the art on this. It's not that cartoony. It's a little more, it's a little more amorphous. It's a little more um, kind of Just impressionistic. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I it's. It is very cool, and it's cool to see these new characters. I mean, you've got Savine straight up in the Zoltan Boros style. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, you yeah. know, he just looks awesome. Very steampunk, kind of. Yeah. The, the oh, yeah. Going on That's here. a good take. And then yeah. Ange, Ange, like you said, is is very impressionistic, and you can see is you know she's either it's either representing madness or the haste or something. Probably it's very cool. Above. Yeah. Let's jump to Friday and talk about the sure. card that I am singularly most excited about so far. I didn't even is... need to link this to you, dude. I knew that you were going to see it. <laughs> like... Which is Carrick, son of Yawgmoth. Dude, I can play Carrick on turn four for paying four mana and six life. Yep. And then every black mana in any cost becomes... It just it becomes a Frixie mana. This seems the most breakable to me. I can't believe that they've printed something else with Phyrexian Mana. The, I mean, my favorite EDH deck is already my uh, Erebos, God of the Dead. And this, this is a shoe in It's a shoe in It's a shoe in It's already a deck that plays with the, you know, let's, okay, I'm going to spend eight more life. I'm going to spend ten more life to get that many more cards into my hand. I need to gain some life back with some of the effects I've got. I really need to punish them if I'm going to be drawing this many cards and have this many resources. This card just fits fits perfectly and it comes with lifelink to boot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I love that they put lifelink on it. I, I'm just like, oh my gosh, Phyrexian mana. Like, back. I can't, I just, I can't believe that they brought it back. I'm super, I can't be more pumped about that. The art is also dope. Let's talk about that for a second while we're talking art. Um, Chase Stone killed it with this like son of Yawgmoth thing. I read up on the lore a, bit, a little bit. Apparently it's like a creation of Yawgmoths. It's not actually a son. Well, it is a horror minion. But so, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a horror like minion. A, it's, it's, it's so cool. It's, it's so like cool. this is the kid that always caused trouble at the birthday parties. Right, absolutely. I mean, I'm assuming that he's either going to be in the Ange or in the... Uh, I mean, he's got to be either in the Ange or in the uh, Kadena deck. Um, doesn't really hugely fit with the Kadena model, so I'm assuming it's going to be in the Ange deck. Maybe that's already known. Let us know in the comments below if you know which deck he's going to be in. I will be getting the one that's got him in it because... He is immediately going into my Erebos deck. Immediately. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Bro, and, and this this Sanctum of Eternity. Yeah, I was gonna say, let's move to this ridiculous land that this is, is next. Close, this is as close as we're ever gonna get to Caracas. So just just if you're sitting right. there going, Oh, Caracas is banned in, in EDH. Yeah, it's banned because it's absolutely abusable. This is a one-sided Caracas on your turn to return your commander. So you know if you're about how... to combo off and, and they oh, go yeah. half the exile on your commander, Whoops. just bounce it. I you mean, know, this is amazing. Spot. I love that it says only or during your land. turn and not only at sorcery speed. Because you can do it at instant speed, but only on your turn. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you can, you can respond. You know how... Personally, between you and me, you know how many eye rolls I get whenever I bring my Maelstrom Wanderer deck to the table? This card oh, yeah. makes oh, that God. broken. It makes it ridiculous. I don't even have to recast Maelstrom Wanderer for whatever the added cost is. I just get to... I, it's it's. I've already built in with creatures, you know, 
the ability to to return him to my hand so I can recast him and take advantage of God, that trigger and over and over. That. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. Oh That's yeah. Awful. This card That's goes awful. into Maelstrom Wanderer so quick. It's um, ridiculous. Jeez, that even makes me want to like during the video here do a, a quick price check on the pre-sale of that card. Because... Well let's here I can pull it up right here. Let's um let's scroll down and look at Sanctum of Eternity. Oh actually no it's not showing up on uh on Scryfall yet, I guess it's not updating with the pre-sale costs. While you look that up, I'm gonna talk a little bit about Leadership Vacuum, a blue two other instant. Target player returns each commander they control from the battlefield to the command zone, and you get to draw a card. How about this? Targeted removal for a player's commander that gets around Hexproof, that gets around you know, lightning greaves that gets around all of these kind of things that everybody builds into their damn Voltron decks. This says, nope, I'm targeting the player instead. It's already what you had to do to build around that strategy was build in some sacrifice effects, build in some target player returns effects. And this this is perfect, plus it cantrips. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what else, what else do you want? It's, it's an amazing, amazing card. Also, personal it's very flavor. very narrow, but in command, sure. it's incredibly potent. Absolutely. Look very at this. Narrow, but for, for our personal playgroup, our buddy Biff, one of his signature decks is his Cedrus deck. And it's got Cedrus flavor text down here at the bottom. While they scrundle to fill the sun in vacancy at the top, we strike. God, it sounds just like him. I, I know that he's going to love Biff leadership or Cedrus, vacuum. I don't, I don't know. But <laughs> it is, it sounds Either like one. Him. So that brings us to Saturday, and that, that gives us a common in Scare Tiller, which is a four-cost artifact creature, another Scarecrow, so it's got a fairly relevant creature type that has always wanted more support. Yeah. When it becomes no, tapped, cool. you can, you can use this. Art, oh, and the Scarecrow art is cool dope. Art. Yeah, but look at this. You can use this card. Any costs that require tapping creatures, you can use it like that to cheat lands out on the battlefield or return lands from your graveyard to the battlefield i think like, this so far right this so far of all the cards i'm sure that people are sleeping on this one the most but it's got some very interesting effects what do you think about scare tiller before we move on to mr gerard himself scare tiller i i like it it's versatile um this is the exact kind of card that I would want to put into Carador. Yeah. Just the fact that I can, like, grab this. It, it, honestly, in my opinion, it runs right alongside uh, Solemn Smilicrim. Sure. Um, but the fact that I can, like, pot it away for a good five cost, play it from my graveyard using Carador, just to, like, get Wasteland back, get back, right. you know, right. whatever. I mean, you're attacking your 1-4 into certain death, but you don't care because you're getting Sinkhole back from back from the graveyard. Yeah, dude, yeah, it's... it's Or Sinkhole effects. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So, I mean, it's like, okay, I, I have a land that I need to play, I've already played a land, so we're going to go ahead and play Scare Tiller from the yard, we're going to go ahead and play a second land this turn, or oh, yeah. actually, holy shit, my opponent just played, you know, whatever abusable land let's go ahead and get that wasteland back that we have sitting in the yard right uh or let's let's go ahead and we're gonna uh play an effect that lets us destroy bajuka bog so that we can get bajuka bog back like right. there's there's a lot of fun stuff that you can do with this and i and I, I think it's uh you know for a common it's really it's really good that brings us to our final mr gerard gerard however you want to pronounce him weatherlight hero First strike in 3-3 in the Boros colors, and whenever he dies, exile it and return it to the battlefield. All artifact and creature cards in your graveyard that were put there from the battlefield this turn. He's an eggs. He's an eggs guy. Um, yeah, man. What, what a card. This uh, is this is the kind of card that I think could be very abused. Very abused. Yeah, you build it into the right sacrifice engine. Right. I could see that. Wiping the board, returning everything, this kind of this kind of build. I mean, plus the art. Look at this. You've got you've got all these characters in here. Miri is in there. Karn is in there. I mean, there's Squee hanging out. It's it's a very it's a very fan service art. It's a very fan service card. You know, I thought 
when oh, they yeah. said I they mean, talked look, about the, when Gerard the wheel the wheel that it, it, it's like oh yeah this is so clearly like and this is definitely the weather yeah, light really cool. represented behind him it's it's not what I expected they had announced previously that Gerard was going to be coming back they they showed the art uh, Gavin teased the art a couple days before they actually showed off his card. Um, wasn't expecting him to be an egg types, uh, eggs type uh, kind of commander, but uh, you know it's it's a nice surprise. It's an interesting surprise. I assumed it was going to be uh, legends matter with especially with all the dominaria stuff that's come out. Um, you know, making historic a thing and making legendary a huge archetype. So it, it's not what I expected, but it's it's interesting nonetheless. Yeah, the the only thing I'll say about the card is. If you really, really want to take advantage of this effect, it is a very specific kind of deck that you're going to be building because oh, yeah. it's going to be like a a weird like combo kind of. Honestly, if you have a good idea for this deck, leave it in the comments what you would do right. because I'm I'm trying to put it together from like an EDH perspective in my mind, and I just don't see like I mean. Yeah, I mean it's it'll take some it'll take some creative brewing for sure. You I know, mean, it, artifacts it, that I'm sack and have effects, creatures yeah. that have ETB triggers or death triggers that you can get you know double up on those. Obviously, that's where my mind goes first. That's obviously the easiest answer. But but let me ask you this, Joel: How yeah. would it be ordered if if Gerard is on the field and you have a field full of artifacts and a field full of creatures? <laughs> And then all of a sudden you cast Planar Cleansing. Yeah. I, is this... Is you're this asking, right. You're asking me questions I should have looked up. And honestly, I thought about it and didn't even look it up. So, you know what? Let's see. Hang on. Reddit will know. Reddit always knows. Reddit always knows. So, yeah. Everything dies. His ability goes on the stack. And then he comes back. And the only thing I, I will say as well... Everything comes back. Not him. He's a is, is typically Boros Colors... They, in in my opinion, kind of flounder uh, in in a commander setting. Yeah, it's just so like maybe a, maybe this can be the thing. You know, it's essentially wipe all their blockers and armies off the board, and get then yours back. and then you get your army back and you can go to town. Yeah, from that perspective, it's a lot. It's a lot more straightforward. It takes a lot pieces to, to set it up because then you want some kind of enchantment, giving all your army haste so that you can attack the turn that you wiped. This kind of stuff, and you start getting and a lot of different your pieces. Board wipe didn't destroy enchantments and right, yeah, exactly. It's a whole thing. I bet though, somebody much smarter at Magic: The Gathering is going to be able to break this, and we will we will look like chumps when we see the list that they come up with. When when for some reason Gerard Weatherlight Hero is like a hundred dollars, we're like, why did this happen? Right. Well, that is going to do it for the first round of oh, spoiler yeah. chat we've got cards being spoiled all this week um like i said we're shooting this on sunday i think that now the spoilers are going to start in earnest over the next week so we'll be doing uh videos every day talking about our thoughts yes so uh hang out and uh buckle in and i always talk about buckle buckling yeah there you go make sure you're buckled in other than that yeah. i'm tapped out we'll catch you next time until the future, we will see you then. Jake's on a quest for understanding. That's what I mean.